Hello, 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 everybody. Here is Dr. Wild again talking about different topics on science. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hml.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wild which topics do we have? Research, community, education, care delivery hours, and achieving. The article to review today is Stress Fractures, a story of notoriously difficult interview for Harvard Medical School appliance, fact or fiction. In 2012, I asked alumni, including readers of this magazine, for any recollection they have of Daniel Funkenstein and the stress interviews. At that time, it was more than a decade into my exploration of the topic of a stress interview at Harvard Medical School. A search spur by a curiosity about the occurrence of such stories and their persistence. From Cambridge, Massachusetts, at Harvard University Medical School, I want to remind you guys that we usually do these beautiful reviews mostly days, and you can also are invited to go into the official website to download these beautiful articles. I continue doing this track the way this review. Although Fuckenstein stopped interviewing appliance in the early 1970s, stories of his stress interview are still exchanged, often in the belief that such interview continues to take place at Harvard Medical School during my two decades as a member of the Harvard Medical School Committee of Admission, I was repeatedly surprised to learn from applicants that they expect to be subject to stress interviews. This not only contrasts starkly with a prevailing admission position on interviews, that every effort be made and be warm and welcoming, and that delivery stressing appliance was dreadful and counterproductive. Each year at the beginning of the admission season, we would hold workshop on making the interview process a positive experience, one that offered a client the opportunity to be at their best, present the medical school in a welcoming light, and give the appliance the information they would need to decide whether Harvard Medical School would be a good fit. Despite the effort, however, Harvard Medical School had a reputation city in the middle of the 20th centuries for the subjecting interviewees to uncomfortable psychological torment, and that reputation had become well beyond Harvard Medical School. How widely the stories of Falkenstein and stress interviews were now become clear during online searches I conducted. One such search highlighted the 2008 Psychological Today blog about stressing presidential candidates. How do the results? Respond to provocation. I ask Harvard psychiatrist Daniel Fulkenstein was famous for his stress interviews. He might ask someone to open a window, one that the hats be nailed to. Most stories of stress interviews cite tactics attributed to Fulkenstein during the more than two decades he served as a member of the Committee of Admission 1952 to 1975. Linking Fulkenstein with the topic of stress would not have been unusual. He was a psychiatrist who, as a member of the school faculty from 1946 to 1975, studied stress and published about trend in medical school appliance. Yet, in the summer of 2015, when I contact Daniel Fuchstein, 68, about the story linking his father with a stress interview, he told me he did not know whether the stories were true. While the younger Fuchstein knew nothing objective about his father's association with a stress interviews, he did remark that although his father had been deaf for more than 20 years ago, he would be pleased to know that people are still paying attention to him.
When Falkenstein Sr. died in 1994, son Daniel mentioned in a memorial remembrance that his father mastery as a stress interview was an annual feature of the second year medical school student show. Indeed, in the archive of the Conway Library of Medicine programs produced the Harvard Medical School second year shows in the 1960s and the 1970s often include a name resembling Falkenstein in the dramatic person. In December 1961, for example, a student Stephen Shorter, 64 currently, the distinct professor of health and health care in the Division of General Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, played Dr. Fuklin Klein, who is stressed, interviews, and washes brain. According to Schroeder, in his script, he handled nailing a window shut and invited in an appliance. He then declared that it is hot in here and asked the applicant to open the window. After trying in vain to open the window, the applicant turned to the audience, exclaimed, he, hey, hey, some nail this window shut, which scroll says elected a big loud. In Harvard Medical School, the story began America's premier medical school, and the making of America's doctor, author John Lennon, addressed stress interviews in the charter on getting into Harvard Medical School. There is a world of stories, a proclital and unbelievable truth about the way it was. There was the Harvard faculty member who would invite a training candidate to take a seat in an office bar except for the interviewing desk and chair. If the student just stood there looking blank and baffled, he was out. Elsewhere in his book, Lango Ku, a likely for Bogart, formerly the Robert Henry Fletcher professor of psychology and chair of the department of psychology at Harvard Medical School on the side of Augustain and stress interviews. It became obvious that most people on the admission commitments shouldn't be there. There was a psychiatry who used to nail down the window. Terrible, I used to argue with him about that. Some who recall Fuchstein had more temporary assessment. Gerald Foster, a Massachusetts General Hospital internist who served as a faculty associate dean for admissions from 1982 to 1998, told me that although Fuchstein had an off-putting air, all these stories are really not true. Every scholar didn't experience at first hand but always knew someone who knew someone that it happened to. When I was in charge, there were stories about his interviews long after he stopped doing interviews. Some anecdotal data on Fuchstein and his interview style emerged in a transcript from 2006. University of Wisconsin Oral History is one of its faculty members' genetics poll, Son 76. When I ask alumni of their stories, 46 respond, mostly individuals who had been interviewed in between 1952 and 1974, including fifth non Harvard Medical School graduates, although these requests and the analysts that follow, who never passed master and scientifically value. My inquirer did elicit and set of rich narrative, including first person testimonies, and because most response report the multiple recollections, the number of incidents for exact number of responses. Eleven of the respondents report that they interviewed with Fonstein were not stressful, with a son describing their interview is glowing term. Two say they were disappointed they hadn't had a stressful interview they had expected. Most of the respondents describe rumors of a friend report of Israel interviews. The most commonly described rumor was the being asked to open a window that had been nailed shut. 
One of these include the story of an interview who reportedly called Funkstein Bluff by raising his shoe to break the window. Other rumor ploys include a phone that ran after the interview had exceeded the interview with hiding under the desk. They offer cigarettes but not a stray, the accents of a tray of the interview, and the interview sitting in the visitor chair, leaving his desk chair of the interview. One person described a rumor that the coin had been left on the floor to see whether the interview would be it up another response to a rumor about an interview interrupted by a telephone call after the call ended the interview was asked to repeat the conversation. Among the more colorful rumors was one of had it had the interview was asked to wear the interview white coat and sit in the interview with shirt and another that said the interview would cut off the bottom of the interview neck. I had my own personal experience with Fugenstein when I interviewed in 1968. Fugenstein looked at my record and pointed out that I was literature concentrator. He said that the future of medicine was in biochemistry. Why, he asked, did we need someone like me? I was unprepared and insufficiently intellectually distressed to debate logically. What well, I did not know that day was that during the same year, Fugenstein had written about the importance of and behind the pressure against a liberal arts education for students aspiring to enter medical school. Was that the stress interview? Probably not. Not gimmicks, not tricks, just a fair challenging presentation of the hypothesis I was however stressful. The evidence of anecdotal that I get from alumni and others indicate that one time Harvard Medical School deserved its deputation for a stress interview, but the school actions since that period show that it not should such effort and is not proud of the legacy. The power of his stories, however, is evidenced by the fact that his reputation was being sustained for the past six and a half decades and actually for the four decades since the stress interview were abandoned. Alright guys, remember this article is posted at the magazine of Harvard Medical School and you easily can download it from the official website. See you next time. Bye bye.